What is up, football fans, but most importantly, UFL fans? Welcome to another episode of USFLA. As always, your host, Ace, joined by my main man, Webb, over there. And joining us today, we have two special guests. One is a returning guest from our last episode, Scout. And then our newest member of the United Football Media, we have Josh from the Brahma Bullpen, our newest show, which has popped off since joining our network. So we are super excited to have him on. I love watching his show. Uh, his producer, behind the scenes, great gentleman over there, very knowledgeable. So very excited to have a full-on XFL head to talk about the merger because it until this point, we have had nothing but USFL guys, which has been just you know, kind of Stanish, kind of we're, we're fanboys and everybody, we get comments on YouTube and they're like, whoa, you guys are way too USFL. You don't talk about the XFL. So we were like, all right, we'll get a guy. So we got the guy. So very excited. <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah. but very yeah, excited. Sure. Uh, and we have a lot to talk about. We got a lot of news kind of officially, but a little unofficially, but we'll get into that. So which, which one do we want to talk about first? Should we go chronologically? Chronological. Yeah, that works. Chronological. Okay, so first one, we'll bring it up. Uh, let me make sure I know which one it is. Here it is. Screenshots that were sent out by Scooby Wright yesterday, December 20th, uh, a day before the 100 days till kickoff. This is what we got. So, Webb, do you want to read it? Uh, so I'm not going to read line by line, but the four teams that are surviving for the USFL are the Michigan Houston, Memphis, Birmingham. Uh, Memphis head coach has been named. Uh, Brandon posted that out, uh, that it would be John D. Filippo. And then there'll be an allocation process. Uh, part one is that you got a protected list. All the existing teams, those four teams, get to protect 42 players that are under contract already. Now, if you go to the app right now, I know last episode, me and uh, Ace were... Uh, talking about how great the app is, but it's not updated right now. Like they're adding and Fox has just stopped updating the, the app. So we really don't know where all the teams stand, um, but they have to get down to 42. Uh, they do not provide dates on this side. I know the XFL will. Uh, then phase two will happen with uh, 20 players from those four teams will draft 20 players from the teams that are going away. Pittsburgh, New Jersey, in a New Orleans. Draft. Which is What's a new that? word in a dispersal draft, which is a new yeah. word for us. We we haven't seen a dispersal draft yet. And then the fun one is phase three when both leagues will be drafting all the rest of the players. Um I think the key thing is that they have to be under contract or played in 2022 to be drafted in that phase. So that that's it's just gonna be a wild month. Uh, XFL when we get to the Jeff uh, Jeff Bidette. yeah his his uh, tweets or copies of the tweets you start to get dates mm -hmm. and everything happens by January 15th and I don't know if you guys know I don't know if you got kids Scout doesn't have kids I guess that's our running joke when he's on but <laughs> <I don't have laughs> December 25th um, we got Christmas, <laughs> then we got New Year's, and then yes. everything's supposed to be done by January 15th with the rosters and the draft and all this kind of stuff. Like, I just don't know when. And we haven't even heard an official merger has happened, right? We've heard that it's been agreed upon, but it hasn't really happened. So it's just yeah. a, it's going to be a crazy three weeks here. Yeah, no. Uh, so, Scout, what was your initial reaction? It's your boy, Scooby Wright, Stallions legend. The shark dog himself. He posted these screenshots. What did you think when you saw them? Per source. So like, the first source. thing yeah. was like, oh my God, Scooby's going to get the crap for this. Because like, I, I just thought like, I, I read that first one that he sent out and I'm like, oh yeah, like someone's going to yell at him. And then about an hour passed and I saw it pop up in like some other channels and stuff. And I'm like, hold on, is this like just going to happen? And then by like hour seven, I started talking about it. Cause I was like, you know, I, I have connections. I'm like, I don't want to get canned because Hey, I commented on this random post, but I'm like, and then after I sat down and thought about it, I'm like, okay, so who would be on the, the stallions roster? And I had this conversation with Luke too. And we disagreed on a few, but it was like the, the solid was usually the same. I think it was like, he, he said that Dion Kane would be safe. And I was like, no, we would keep Brian Allen, whatever. But it's like the, there's a total different 
disconnect of you have this full team and now you're going to have two thirds of it. And then you're going to get back 20 from, you know, the USFL and then whatever happens after that. So I think it'll cause more parity, but not that much. So, but it's just weird. Like the timing is weird, especially because in high school and in college, we're in a dead period of everything when it comes to off season stuff. So I thought this was really weird too, because it's like you're timing it where, the initial planning process is going to happen before new year's so that's fair and then josh for you as an xfl fan once you saw this official text go out and then boogie had commented on scooby's uh tweet about it because scooby was complaining that they were getting the news through a text not a text from a coach not a text from the players association but like an automated text and Boogie kind of went and commented, man, we just wanted to get you the information. You're still complaining, which gave it validity. So then you knew that it was like a real official text. So when you saw that, did that make you think, OK, maybe the XFL teams that we've heard are also true because they were spot on for the USFL teams? So first of all, um, shout out to Scooby for using the word jabroni in proper <laughs> English when he did Great that. Uh, but from the XFL perspective, I was waiting for my news, right? Where's my Scooby, right? Where, where's my Scooby, right, coming out and busting the news so that we can all react and think about it? Uh, well, then we got it a day later, right? Jeff uh, Bedette from the Vi oh, uh, Vipers. Me, Vipers, from the Vipers, he, he pulled a Scooby, right? And so shout out to him. Those guys are doing what I consider uh, the work for the fans, right? They're just like us. They're so tired of not hearing thing, not knowing anything. They just started posting it just, just because. And so as far, I mean, that, excuse me, but I have a lot of respect for them for doing that because they're probably catching a lot of heat that we don't even know about. So there's no, there's no telling what they they're, what they're going through are. on their side. So we, we appreciate it. If there's a way of saying, thank you, other than saying, thank you, uh, let us know. Uh, but there's so many players out there. And I agree with Scott, with Scott that, you're, you're going to condense the teams. Every team's going to get better. You're going to get closer and closer to what we consider NFL level talent. A lot of these players sign uh, practice squad uh, contracts and been jump back and forth. And you're really going to, it, it sucks, right? It does because half the team and half the league's going away, but you know, uh, cream rises at the top, so to speak. So, but anyways, I was just, I was just looking for my, uh, my, my Scooby moment and I got it from, from Jeff there with the Vipers. The one, yes. the one thing I, I really liked about this is it's setting up the USFL versus XFL. You know, our arguments, you're going to have four super teams from the XFL and the USFL going head to head, at least for year one. I know year two will start mixing. Hopefully it makes it year two, whatever. That's a different conversation, but the sides are drawn. It's almost like if you follow baseball, American league and national league with the DH yeah. and the non DH. And they're like, those were those, that's a, that's an NL player. You know, he, he's a, he's a good field and shortstop, but in the American league, you had like Derek Jeter and everything like good, like shortstops that can hit home run. So now that that's obviously changed, but that, that's what I took the most from it. I'm like, oh, so the USFL is going to stick with the USFL right now, at least until phase three. And by the time you're in phase three, you're already at what? 62 players. Mm -hmm. Like, how many more are really going to make the roster? By the time you get to 63, 64, those guys are really the marginal ones that are going to be on fighting for their job because they already got 62 guys. And if you only keep 58 or what was the XFL number, Josh, last year? For, uh, within active. It, it was 55. Started. 55 total? Yeah. It was, uh, and uh, a lot of that played off to the Rocks uh, player or 54, excuse me. No, 55. Uh, yeah, they played off of the Rocks last person to, to make the roster, or last person to get cut. This was player, player 54. 54, yeah. yeah. So it was 54, and then they were allowed to have, obviously, some practice squad. I think it was like 12 practice squad players on standby, but there was only the 54 that uh, that dressed out. for the games, yeah. The USFL had 50, so um, with 58 being on the – with the eight inactives. Scout, what's up? Um. The funniest thing with the ALNL comparison there, the first time that I mentioned it to my dad, my dad was like, okay, well, are the kickoff rules going to be a different? Or is it going to be like, oh, if you're the USFL, it's the USFL rules. If it's XFL, it's XFL rules. I'm like, and then I was thinking, I'm like, that would be fun, but I don't think so. 
Um, yeah. That I was just thinking the same thing because you brought up the DH, no DH. So yeah. it's like, okay, if you're playing in an XFL stadium, you're going to do their kickoff. If you want to do an onside, it's a fourth and 15 instead of a fourth and 12. Uh, you know, um, what, what were the other? Oh, but then it gets it gets different because in the XFL, it was one foot in bounds for a catch. Mm. Where right. in the USFL, it was two foot inbounds for a catch. And I think that gets way too murky uh, and would just yeah. be really confusing to a casual fan who's watching because they'd be like, oh, that was only one foot. And they'd be like, they needed two feet in. And then they watch the next game and it's like, oh, they got one foot in. That works. And they'd be like, I don't understand what's happening. Uh, yeah, and it and would then, be really annoying to explain it over and over. And, and then uh, did you Not did you bad. see? Did you see? I mean, in the XFL, we had that if you're if it's uh the you're in the fourth quarter and half the fourth quarter is gone and you're down, you can take the ball with a fourth and fifteen instead of kicking it off to the other team. Did yeah. they have a oh, similar yeah. rule in the yeah, USFL? So, we were fourth um, and twelve. It was yeah, 12. in the USFL, it it was literally any time you were kicking off, you could just do a fourth and twelve instead of an onside or a kickoff. Really, you didn't have to be trailing or nothing. You 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 could have the lead and still that. Wow, you could do it, dude. Which I thought was crazy because I um when I got into this, I was coming off of being a big Madden guy, and so I was thinking if I was playing a video game for the USFL, and I was good enough, I could make people quit online because with those rules, (laughs) they could literally only touch the ball one time in a game if I was good enough. Right, that would be insane because they have to get the uh, ball you know, either at, to open the game or at halftime. So I was like, if you're good enough, you do a fourth and 12 every single time. The other team literally never touches the ball. Now your offense would be exhausted. You have to have a lot of depth, but theoretically the other team could never touch the ball. So, I'm, so I hear you admitting, I hear you admitting the XFL rules are better in this instance because you can only do it when trailing in the fourth. For, I did not know it was only trailing in the fourth. And I watched a lot of XFL football. I'll, t- I'll take that know. rule, but give me two feet. Give me two feet, man. Two feet in bounds. I, I need okay. two feet in bounds. You and know, they're trying to get off. back to the our NFL. Kickoff. Dude, the USFL kickoff. I hate kickoff. the XFL kickoff. I liked it in 2020. It was exciting. It was new. Mm-hmm. And then once I watched, once I got into like my third XFL game uh, this past year, I was like, this kickoff is not fun. Like it's well, it's really anticlimactic because it's just a kick. You're watching a lot of players stand there, and then it's three seconds of he has the ball and he's tackled. Uh, you know, it was much less likely for a kick to go back for a big return. It, it in theory, it was a really cool idea, but then watching it, I just I wasn't really into it. It was a year wanted- one deal that I truly feel they were going to tweak. It, it was a, a year one yeah. idea, and in actuality, I, I'm not sure you know how much USFL fans know, but. We actually, the XFL had that, uh, it was like a trial run for the NFL. The NFL actually mm-hmm. was giving XFL some ideas that they wanted them to try out in pro football games. And this kickoff was one of them because, you know, it's the most dangerous play in the game, the kickoff. So this was like an idea that we were test running uh, for the NFL. So there would have definitely been tweaks to it year two. Because yeah. we, oh, we both have the shootout, right, in overtime? Mm-hmm. Yes. Which I love. I think that's much better than the NFL style, uh, in a, especially being in a, a Vikings fan and losing our second time in a row to the Bengals in overtime. Uh, yeah, I wish it was a shootout. <laughs> NFL <laughs> rules where there could be a tie is absolutely ridiculous. I have no idea why you can have a bunch of professional athletes on a field and then not decide who wins. It's yeah. absolute. This is not soccer, folks. Get it out of here. <laughs> it's, like, it's like kissing your sister. One thing, a flag, an offensive flag should not negate any chance. Like if you get, because if you get a holding on a on a shootout, it that that point's negated. It goes to the other side. Of the oh, you should be able to redo the down just yeah, ten yards like, back. That that's the reason that a flag is made. Like because yeah, like if you did get it, well, if you didn't get it, it should end it. But if you did get it, then you yeah. should be able to go for it again just ten yards back. But I digress. We're getting into the weeds here. Now, (laughs) let's go into our second insider that we had. So you said, dude, Josh, you look like Shaquille O'Neal drinking that Coke Zero. Wow. Sorry. You have huge hands is what I'm saying. I got a little sore throat. You're a big dude. A little sore throat, so I have to, you know. (laughs) No, it's just wild to me because I was like, wow, his hands are really big. Sorry. Way off. off Wait wait till you see me in person. (laughs) (laughs) He's got the tall boy. It looks like a 12-ounce can. (laughs) But... Uh, 
to our insider from the XFL, we have Jeff Bidette, which is, I think it's interesting that it was Jeff because Jeff was a Michigan Panther year one of the USFL, and then he jumped ship and went to the XFL Vipers and played on that um, terrible field in Las Vegas. <laughs> I got to get my jabs in. That team's gone, and I'm glad. But he went and he balled out for Las Vegas. So he's played both sides. He's said in tweets before that he left the USFL because he didn't like the way that he was treated. He didn't like the process. And then he went to the, the uh, XFL and he liked it better. So I thought that was interesting. And he went and he posted, I think it was an email that he got, though, like instead of a text. And his was very much the same thing. Uh, number one, the new league may be created which is interesting that they said may be created by the beginning of January, 2024. This would be given this, I would highly recommend that all doctor's appointments be booked, blah, 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 you know, getting into the weeds, but they announced both the XFL and USFL teams that would be uh, in the new league, which is good because it reinforces what we saw from Scooby rights with Birmingham, Houston, Memphis, and Michigan. And then with the XFL, it's the Arlington Renegades, DC defenders, San Antonio Brahmas, go bullpen and the St. Louis battle Hawks. They said that all teams are going to be in Arlington, which we had seen or heard, but I don't believe that was in Scooby Wright's text. Uh, all teams are going to be in Arlington, a lot of games. It gave us a for sure date for training camp, which is February 23rd, which you have to believe will mirror the U.S. Fells. Why would they not report at the same date to Arlington? Uh, they're getting a $400 a week stipend, the $53.50 per game. Uh, it shows that they're now matching, I believe, what the USFL got for their CBA in season two, right, Webb? Are those the same numbers? I think they are. I'm not 100 percent sure. I, I know it's pretty uh, close. I they are. Yeah, I think it's pretty close. Yeah. But then uh, it goes into the draft information. So it start. It talks about the dispersal draft, and it talks about a mini dispersal draft. And this one, it gives us dates. So they're going to have to drop players so that their teams are down to 42 protected players, which are the players that they're going to keep prior to December 27th, two days after Christmas. At least they're letting their, them open their Christmas gifts before they get cut, which is crazy. Then on December 27th, they're having a mini dispersal draft where the four teams that exist are going to draft 10 players max from the dissolved teams, which is interesting. Then it says on January 15th, they're having a super dispersal draft where both the XFL and USFL will have a dispersal draft consisting of players from both the XFL and USFL. So, Webb, like you had mentioned earlier, they're having a mini dispersal draft because they want the top talent from the XFL, from the USFL, to stay in the XFL and USFL. Uh, that we saw because Jeff Bidette, I'll let, us, I'll let people see us again. Jeff Bidette mm -hmm. tweeted after this. He was angry. I think he posted the screenshots out of kind of spite because he posted, I've reached out to the four teams that were rumored to still exist before he got these uh, this email. And all those four teams said, we're good at wide receiver. We don't need you, which is crazy to me because who wouldn't want Jeff Bidette, who was the best receiver on the Vipers, and they had what um, Martavius Bryant and some other dogs. So interesting. So he said, I wanted to reach out to USFL teams, and they told me that was against the rules. So it seems as though right now, you know, they open free agency back up, but you can only sign with your league. So Mark Thompson, he's been kind of the spokesperson, just the WikiLeaks of spring football, especially for the USFL side. And he had tweeted, you know, you have to be on a team. You have to have already had a contract with the USFL. Then he tweeted like an hour later. He said, they're opening free agency back for the next 48 hours. Get on a team now. And he did that in all caps. So they let players sign, but you could only sign back with the league that you were with. So it's interesting that Boogie kind of did a little bit of insider trading. Like, I don't like that Mark Thompson's calling him out, but he did do a bit of insider trading where he knew that his team was going to be gone. So he signed before they put the rule in place where he would not be able to cross leagues. So now he is a San Antonio Brahma, where now once this uh, text had been sent out, you are not allowed to sign with the other league. You have to stay with your league until the dispersal draft. And then after that, with the free agency period that follows that. So it's all very interesting. Uh, Jeff Bidette has since deleted these tweets. I was lucky enough to get them before he took the post down. You know, you mentioned earlier, Josh, that he these players were probably taking some heat. I believe he did specifically because he did take down the tweet. Scooby, 
may have, but I just don't. I think he just DAF does not, DGAF does not give a frick. So he left his up. He's still talking. He literally uh, told the captain, Brandon, that he was going to be a keyboard warrior. He was fighting Webb in the comments. It was, <laughs> it was getting crazy. But Jeff, uh, I think he took some heat and he pulled it down. So, Josh, you are the XFL guy in the chat right now. You are, you know more than all of us. When you saw Jeff post this, were you excited? Were you nervous or relieved? I don't know. What was it? Uh, I could definitely a mixture of all of them. I, uh, as I talked about earlier, we're, I was happy to hear something because uh, I was getting a little uh, jealous. I'm like, why yeah. do we have USFL? Why, you know, I Scooby. I think he's got a little little measure of protection, right? He was like one of the top defensive players on a two time champ team, right? So right. it's a little, it's it's you know the the Vipers. I think won two games. I think no. uh, they win two. I think it was two, and I think Orlando only won one. We we could fact check that later. Yeah, and Orlando but, only beat one, and it was the defense. Yeah, and I think yeah. So you know he probably has a little less protection, and he's on a he's on a team that's gone, right? So he's not, you know, I don't know what his contract situation was, and whether he's one of the protected players or not. So he he probably has less security. So so immediately you go from appreciation to oh man, well, you know, hope this guy didn't just put himself in a bind, you know. So. Concern and excitement, and it was just good to get some news. To be honest with you, I I don't know what the league's thinking. Uh, even the players are getting frustrated, so they're gonna say something sooner or later. Yeah. Well, first of all, I have to say I love that you felt concern and that you cared about the player because that is exactly the mentality that we love to have here at the UFM. It's always player first. That's why we always hand the floor over to them at the end of each show. Uh, so love that, but. Scout, I believe you were about to say something. What did you think? Because I know you got in, you got a little heat, especially from the community legend Ducky last year, because your <laughs> handle used to be USFLians. But before the USFL started, you were tweeting a lot about the XFL. Yeah. And you were taking some heat because they were like, why is USFL in your name? But you're talking about the XFL. So I know you paid attention. I know you know these teams. I don't quite remember which team you liked. But what was your take on the Jeff Bidette? So I was sadly a one in nine Orlando Guardians fan um, because I'm a Jacksonville guy and everything. Um, I mean, I liked the other teams, but it was like the only one I could really get behind was the Guardians. And I think one team or one one person, because he's not a player, that a lot of people are going to be like, oh, is a offensive coordinator Shane Matthews for the Guardians? He's definitely going to find a spot somewhere in this eight-team super team league. And if he doesn't find it, in the league, he'll go to Florida or he'll, he'll go somewhere else because he's like the, the offense was not the issue. Like there was some roster issues. I have, I will say this ten times over. Whoever thought that quarterback room was the same level oh. of the other seven quarterback rooms? That nuts. And you could have said that before. And I don't want to like talk down any of those players. Because all those guys could have been, you know, the quarterback three, quarterback two on any other team. But when you have a room of quarterback twos, no one's going to be quarterback one. So, but yeah, but there's, um, I know, I think a lot of, a lot of the guardians are predators now, like for the AFL, um, like a ton, like almost every notable one is now signing with the Orlando Predators. Um, and I think some of the other teams are going to be a, a lot like that too. But I think a lot of it is that these guys are on vacation. Like these guys are thinking that, hey, I don't even have to report for another month. And so we're probably not going to see anything for another week or two because they're having to talk to their agents who are also probably not on vacation, vacation but also not working their full load that they're usually doing in the spring and fall. But and then we're having to get down the pipeline. So we'll probably see like first week of January, we'll see a ton of different stuff. And but I would say Shane Matthews would be the biggest name that pops off the board to me. And like, I know, um, um Latimer. Talking, yeah, Lat Latimer, Cody Latimer. Um, he'll be another one that pops off the board for Orlando, but there's a, there's a lot where it's like, we'll have to figure out what they want because there's a ton of older receivers in the XFL and especially on Vegas. And when you see the, the, Will they take an older receiver or would they rather have a younger receiver? Plus, we're adding in not only do we have the USFL college draft, XFL college draft from last year, 
we have the 24 class that's coming up too. And technically speaking, like, I'm not sure if they can't play, but I would assume they can play after they're done with their college stuff in this month. So I like, yeah, I remember there being a question on age. You remember that when, when, when the X, I don't know how close, when the XFL started, there was a question on age when we when they were doing the draft and when they started watching the XFL taking 30 year old, 28 year old players, there was a lot of fan comments saying, hey, man, I thought this was supposed to be a league to give young guys a shot. These older dudes already had their shot, that whole that whole deal. That all got, you know, put to bed pretty quick, though. But it, it's it's interesting that you mentioned the the uh, the older receivers in the league, you know? Yeah. Well, I, I agree. I like that point a lot, that these were, and especially with the whole Player 54 thing, these were pitched as, you know, you're a fringe guy, you're a young guy who didn't get a shot. And then you had the Josh Gordons, you had the Martavius Bryants, you had all these dudes. Like quarterback, I get it. You want to have the A.J. McCarrens, you want to have a more veteran quarterback. But when you have receivers, when receivers are dime a dozen, dude, there's so many receivers. And you have these older guys who were in the NFL, messed their shot up. You know, Josh Gordon, how many drug tests has that guy failed? And they're just like, oh, we're just trying to get – it felt like they were saying, we're trying to get big names to get yeah. views. Where the USFL, I remember Reuben Foster, he posted. Everybody knows Reuben Foster because he was a huge guy in the draft, messed up his chance, Alabama, all that stuff. And he tweeted, is the USFL really a way to get back in the NFL? I might mess with it. I reached out to, because I was close with the uh, last GM for the Gamblers, and I was like, Reuben Foster's on the market. He should be a gambler. And he looked, and he said, too old. Said too mm. old had a shot to Ruben Foster. So the Maulers got him. We didn't even try. Uh, and then you looked at the average age for the USFL teams, and I think all of them averaged under 26 years old, which is yeah. insanely young. So it was interesting to see the first XFL draft, and there were a lot of older guys. So it was a little weird, a little against the grain for what they were preaching, right? It was weird. But Scout, what's Ethan? up? Defensive captain for the Orlando Guardians was 32 year old Matt Elam. Insane. Like, a ton of a ton of the the Florida fans love. Like I think I think a few of those older guys were like, yeah, we'll get fan support, which like they did. Like there was a ton of people love Matt Elam and what he did for Florida's program and what he did for the Guardians. Because even though they got one win, like they were close in a lot of games and. It was because of individual play, but yeah, but I just looked at some of their ages and I did not know, like, like, it, I think it's, was it Eli Rogers? It was 29. Um, Latimer was, was already 30 um, or 31, actually, forgive me. Um, and it, it's, it's just crazy. Cause I, I know it's like half the guys on the stallions are older than 26 now. And it's like when they were the first year, or cause we're going to year three now, the first year they were all 24, 25, 26. And now it's like, we haven't really put any at the front load of that. We've even backloaded a little bit when it comes to age. So I think we're definitely going to get to a point this year that you're going to see a split in does this team care more about winning or more about the development. So I think yeah. NIL is going to change all that because every, you're not going to get the, the twenties, the 21s, the 22s, yeah. you know, they're gonna stay. They're gonna stay. They're gonna stay in college longer if they don't have an NFL opportunity because they're, they're making money in college now, which might make it to where the age of the spring leagues actually gets to that more twenty-five to thirty. Yeah, that is a good point. I didn't think of. Now, Webb, you have been weirdly quiet for one of the most talkative people I know. It's my fault. I keep interrupting him. He keeps wanting to talk. Oh, right. He's he's and then I just jump in there. <laughs> right there. He's like, no. go back to to the notes. <laughs> I've been I've been waiting. Yeah, the Maulers. I've been. I've been quieted. Um, the two differences that I saw in Bedette's and Scooby's messages, the XFL said 10 for the dispersal of the protected, while the USFL said 20. That That's a huge difference that one team is going to have 52 and one's going to have 62 going into the big draft. So yeah. they need to work that out. Um, but I'm excited for this draft. You know, I, I got my I fake do. GM hat on. Like I love this kind of stuff. Like I like I've been waiting all off season. I loved our free agency period of the USFL for the two weeks before every all the doom and gloom started to happen. Um yeah. I, I'm excited for this draft. I just can't believe it's all gonna happen in legitimately three weeks. Like it's just insane that DJ Daniel, all pro 
uh, all USFL corner is going to be out there. Like, does he go to the Stallions? You're, t- you're worried about Brian Allen down there. Do you get DJ Daniel, who was the best corner in the, or second best corner? Mark Gilbert was one. Um, and to go back to your insider of the trading comment, <laughs> you guys have to remember, I knew it was coming. Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, you got two yellow and blacks here. We might be hey, different. I on love different side. Boogie. We both love Doug, uh, I love Boogie now. Boogie. I know. I love Boogie, but he did. He, he signed an NDA. So, like, I would take it as he was trying to tell people without telling people. Like, hey, he came on our show and he said it all the time. He's a mauler for life. He said that on the episode that just released yesterday. Right? Like, he was a mauler for life. For him to change. Them until they were no more. For him to switch sides, mm. I think that should have been a light bulb for a lot of people. Like, oh, this is this is was. real. Like Boogie for for Boogie to move, this is a big deal. And with the NDA, he just was uh, protecting his own butt, really, yeah, with the sure. union. So, I I, I, I think it was a great move by him because, it was a great move. like, he could have signed with the Showboats, right? He could have signed with uh, Atkins, right, around the same time, and everyone would be like, oh, okay, the Maulers are going away. I, I just think him switching the sides completely, it's a big deal. Like, hey, let's go. We we got to get going. Because he always is thankful for the USFL for opportunities with Fox Sports. You know, he did that podcast, cool. the Cleveland show. They hooked him up with media gigs. And, you know, he's a celebrity. I don't know if you've seen All-American yet, Josh, but he's, mm-hmm. he's in All-American on the Walking Netflix the series. It's pretty great. <laughs> he's got a Super Bowl commercial. He's got a Super Bowl commercial coming out on Christmas Day during the NBA games, just to let you know, Lakers Celtics. So, um, wow. got another commercial coming out because he yeah, was in yeah. a Super Bowl commercial, yeah. uh, singing Rihanna, I believe. He was in a Acapella. Peloton commercial <laughs> recently, which every time it came on, because it was on Hulu, it was one of the Hulu commercials, so you see it constantly. And every single time I looked at my wife and I was like, There's Boog, that's Boogie, <laughs> I know him, that's cool. He's sweating, but he had to protect on himself. Peloton. He had, he had to protect that. himself. I get that. So, uh, like, I want to call it insider training. I think it would be uh, kind of sharing the news without sharing the news. So. That's fair. And, and I, I get that. Now, uh, another point that I addressed straight up on Twitter. Scout, you have a point real quick before I say this? Yes. Um, yes. I just want to say uh, I will be 21 by the time the second draft happens. So, Cheers to, cheers to that, brother. <laughs> yeah. We gotta come up with a draft drinking game. That's, 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 what, that's, that's like cheers. I'm I'll doing. drink to that, really. <laughs> Eric Andre, do the same. But I'm glad you're gonna be 21, Scout. That's awesome. Um, so a point that I went straight out on Twitter. Uh, I was at work and I saw a lot of people, and especially because it was Stallions fans mostly, and they always just get under my skin, man. And I saw a bunch of Stallions fans very upset that the hub is gonna be in Arlington. That all eight teams are gonna live in Arlington. They were upset that it's not going to be Birmingham because Birmingham has been such a great host city, which they have been for the U.S. fell for the past two years. And now they're going to have no football players living there. But I addressed it straight up on Twitter. A lot of people saw it. Um, it, it got bigger than I expected. It, it was probably the nice pictures I looked up. But uh, I, I addressed why they were wrong in kind of a nice way where I, I presented my thesis and then I backed it up with my four main points. Uh, but what do you guys think? We'll start with Webb since he's been quieter this episode and we'll work around. So we'll go Webb, Scout, and then we'll end with Josh because I know Josh knows a little bit more about the money side. Uh, and I told him I was going to throw it to him for this one. So I'm going to end well, on Why him. am I going first, man? I'm the Georgia. Like, you guys live in Texas. Scout lives in Alabama. Like, I, I'm the Georgia guy. I'm kind of off the we side. We'll start with you because you matter. We need, the, the, we need the neutral perspective. You matter the most, Webb. The neutral perspective. So I was a USFL guy. Uh, the city of Birmingham has never done anything wrong to me. I've been there a couple times. It's a nice little city. Um, my biggest thing is like Arlington, Dallas is up here. Birmingham's here. That's no disrespect, Scout. I know you live in Alabama. It's it, it's probably a nice place. Not like wrong. this, the city of Dallas and the uh, Dallas Fort Worth area is a growing hub, and I, that's no pun on the USFL. But it's just a growing. The Metroplex? Yeah, it, it is absolutely insane on how fast it, it is growing and it continues to grow. And Texas is, is the most diverse state in the country. Like, there's a lot of business there. A lot of opportunities for businesses, other businesses to maybe work with the XFL or the UFL, whatever you want to call it right now. 
it just makes business sense. Like, let's be honest. It just makes business sense. Yeah. Birmingham is a nice little city. I hope they keep their team because I can't stand them. And it's it's nice to have a team that you just can't stand. And it just is there all the time. I, I don't want them to disappear. Um, but I, I think it's a smart move for the league to grow as a whole. Um, Scout, I know you've been chomping in the bit here. Go ahead and make your thesis for Birmingham. I mean, I think the, the toughest part will be like like the interpersonal side of a of a football relationship. I think like the it'll be it'll still be fine on game day, and I, I assume the game day staff won't fly from Arlington to Birmingham. I would assume that they they're local, or at least like most of them are local. Uh, but the players, obviously, like I know, like you'll probably hear Scooby say it tons of times. Even some of the the away players that were visiting Birmingham, about like running into people, like that mug shots in in like right in Uptown would have players in it, people in it all the time. Like I was telling Webb last time I talked to him, I met Trevor Cathel for the first time at that mug shots, and it was just totally random. And he was like, "Hey, what do you want?" Or like, "Not what do you want?" He was like, "Hey, what's good here?" And I was like, "Well," and then I gave my picky order, and I was like, "My dad likes the bar." Uh, peanut butter bacon burger or whatever and i was like Great but, <laughs> but uh uh it's just so it's so sh- it's definitely a change because like we were like the home of the usfl and i know woodfin was totally in on it the the fan base was totally in on it i honestly think like of definitely of like content creators we probably have the most number of content creators um between and we have even content creators like in colorado like giddy up is a is in colorado and there's a ton of other guys now, but it's like the, the, but moving it out, I don't think a ton will change. I think it will just be a hard pill to swallow, but I think like we'll still be here. We'll still have really good attendance. Um, but it definitely, it definitely puts a thorn in the side because like, I know Luke had already reached out to me about trying to like face to face interview players and that probably won't happen. <laughs> uh with them moving to arlington in what like february um so and most of them don't live in birmingham right now so but uh but yeah so it'll just be you know live and learn but you know before before josh goes josh welcome to the, uh, a jointed league here <laughs> where the stallion fans think everyone should bow down to the red and khaki so yeah. I, I'm just Cat. welcome to it. It's, it's all emotional, <laughs> yeah. I, and I get that, Scout. I, I get it. You guys love your team, and I get it. You guys have had your team. But there's four teams that are, like, I don't have the Maulers anymore, man. Like, I watched that episode twice already my, on my own show just, just to reconnect <laughs> with the guys. You know what I mean? I'm making YouTube shorts, which I never do, about the Maulers. You still have your team, so be grateful yeah. for that. But what's for long term to have your team, you got to kick it over to Josh. So first of all, it it's it's not your fault. Everybody from Bama is probably this way. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it, you're not the center of anything, right? But Arlington is the center of the country. There's a there's a reason there's a reason <laughs> why major corporations such as Tesla, Google. Uh, man, I can't even name all the ones that have moved to the state of Texas in just the last two years from from California, uh, just solely because of not that we're giving them money. It's just we're not taking the state of Texas doesn't take their money from them. So when, when you have a corporation, wherever the headquarters is at, that's the tax code you live by. So if the headquarters is in Birmingham or New York or wherever, that's where it goes by. It's it's business smart to put your headquarters in a state that is going to have friendlier laws. Then you could compound that. The city of Arlington incentivized uh, the XFL as much as they legally could to put the headquarters there. You're talking sales tax return. You're talking property tax return. You're talking EDC, economic growth programs. You're talking 380 agreements. Everything that is legally allowed by a city, they did it. They pulled out all the stops. And it was meant to be a long-term multi-year thing where the city uh, gave up something to get something. Long-term, you know, the Chuck Tall Stadium wasn't being used. Uh, 
and they, they found something to do with it. Now, the layout is ridiculous. Uh, a baseball stadium into a football field, it doesn't quite work. There's areas of the stadium that are just horrible. But, you know, uh, a lot of the revenue that the team and the league generates there goes back to the team and the league, and the cities and the state don't keep it. Um, the other thing is, is to kind of go on Webb's point, you're actually not losing anything, right? It's, it's, you're, you're keeping your stallions. You're going to, you're going to still have that personal one-on-one interface with them. They're going to be down there for game weekend. You're going to run into them at the restaurant. You're going to, you're going to see them at the stadium. All the stuff's going to be the same. I mean, unless you literally were living with a player, nothing's going to change, right? Uh, there, there's, you're still going to have the same access because they're, they, you weren't finding them on a random Wednesday at the Kroger or whatever grocery store you have. It was more around uh, player events, team events, and game days. You'd be able to run into those guys, and it'll be the same thing. You probably won't even notice. Uh, no. There's, and I just think that here in the state of here in the state of Texas, we we are the center of the universe. I say that uh, knowing how it sounds, but uh, the, the, we we have three teams, and uh, we have the population and the dollars to support those three teams. Uh, you know, the only team in the XFL that uh, outdid the Texas teams in attendance was St. Louis and St. Louis is its own unique animal. They're still upset about losing the Rams. And so they go to games just to basically yell cuss words to the old Rams owner. What was his name? Cronky or something. Yeah. Cronky. Like, it's yeah, still the chant for battle Hawk games. It still happens once a game, right? So these, these guys are, are cut deep, deep, deep. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, man, Tex- Texas, the flights, the the DFW airport, and they also have oh. the love. They also have love, right? The other one's named Love. They're they're huge, and there's flights from every city going in there every day, every hour, and it just makes travel so much easier for the league. And I know travel's not a big deal because there's not going to be any West Coast teams to uh, start off with, but you know there there will be maybe one day. That would be sick. I would love to watch this league expand. I'm hoping that that's what this merger means. I'm hoping this merger doesn't just mean we're putting it together so that we can do one more year, you know, something like that. I want it to build. I want more people to care. You're combining the USFL and the XFL fan bases. Since this merger, since we got solid information from the Scooby League, uh, that sounds funny, but since we got that solid information, just the likes on my posts about USFL stuff have started going up on, on Twitter. Our views have been going up on YouTube. You know, you're combining the fan bases and that's a beautiful thing. And it's kind of, it's hard because a lot of people are very abrasive about it. They don't want to do it. You know, um, some people, they're still super USFL and they would never consider bringing on an XFL person to do a show. Like we immediately, Webb was thinking, cause he's the, he's the guy. And he was like, we need to find XFL creators. And he was like, I found this guy. He does a, a Brahma show. I'm going to ask him to join. And me being the skeptic I am, I was like, I don't know. All the time. I just want to be honest. All the time, the skeptic. Oh, I'm a skeptic nonstop. I was like, dude, oh, you know, he was like, I have a good feeling about this guy. I was like, that's the kiss of death when Webb says he has a good feeling about someone. I was like, ah. <laughs> and then you joined, and you and Dustin have been fantastic, and I've loved putting you guys stuff on our YouTube, uh, and it's been great, and I love the integration, and now I get to like actually dive into the rosters, into everything XFL, and that's very exciting. Where yeah. some people they they just don't like that integration, so it's mixed reactions. But if we get both together, that is very exciting, and it will grow. Hopefully, it grows revenue. Hopefully, it grows views. Hopefully, it grows commercial dollars for Fox, ESPN, ABC, and we can get this league to grow and become more Co- competition. Um, that's what we're hoping for. Right. You know, I, that, that is, that's one of the things I, I think is going to be the best where if we do keep the USFL XFL uh, divisions, you know, which is what it's looking like is going to be. I mean, it's going to be awesome because you get that friendly sibling rivalry. And then ultimately didn't all spring football fans want, uh, a spring football championship where the XFL played the USFL anyways at some point. Wasn't yes. that always the we are pie in the sky? So it's the here. United Bowl. It's here. Yeah. We're going to get it, and that's wild. Um, we bring it up all the time that on, I don't even know, USFLA 15, 12, yeah. something way back, dozens of weeks ago, 
uh, we were asked the question, do you think the leagues would ever merge? And Webb straight up said, never. That never. will not ever happen. I said, maybe. I said that the USFL would be um, taking in the XFL if the XFL were to fail financially and just to buy you know, all the trademarks and make sure that the XFL could never exist anymore. Now, that did not happen, but he I fell for the this cow pasture yeah. accounting. That, that's he, the fell, he fell for the, the fake yeah. accounting kind of you know, mm-hmm. rubbing the numbers a little bit. Hey, and I, I, before I came on here, I was, I, I've been fighting with Ducky for a year. Okay. For a year. Losing battle. And, and I know, Losing I know, his, I know his, I know his stick. He, he, he trolls to get interaction, but for a I year, really that. I, yeah, I yeah, I tried to explain to him how people actually in a seat at a game is better than nobody in that seat at a game. And uh for a year he tried to convince me I was wrong. And let me tell you, cow pasture math, cow pasture math is rarely wrong. Okay. Just saying. Sounds like Texas. Yeah, that's that A and M uh degree right there. Yeah. Andy. What were you, a mathematics major, Josh? Nope, not me. I was an engineering major, and even I was fooled. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I I really thought, but I'm liking this way. You know, it sucks. Each league is losing half. That sucks. But the fact that we really are going to get to see the powerhouse, we're going to see the best of the XFL and the best of the USFL. I think that's awesome. So I'm very excited about it. Um. Man, what other points do you guys want to talk about? Something that I want to talk about because it's near and dear to my heart and it might mess up everything I'm doing right now. So there's questions right now. Now, they have said Houston has made it on the USFL side. People keep bringing up rumors that that does not necessarily mean that the gambler's brand uh, has survived. So I have basically confirmed it talking to a lot of different people you know people in the players association coaches all that so the coaching staff and the players for the houston gamblers have survived they will 100 percent be in this merged league but whether or not they will be wearing a gambler's jersey is not 100 percent. do i know if it's gonna happen i don't know i'm hoping that they're gamblers just because i have all this crap behind me that will then become vintage relics i hope they're still the gamblers but there's a chance that because it might pull in better numbers for attendance, better numbers for viewership, that they might take the team that is the gamblers and put them into Roughnecks uniforms. So we'll see. That's a developing story. I'll talk about it on my show, Gamblers Table Talk. I don't know what I'll recall my show. Rig talk. Table talk. Oil rig talk. Rig talk is crap. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I want to do something that has to do with sling and chain because that's always been my favorite part of oil rigs. You lose have, have, you have you kept up with with what the with what the Tennessee Titans are doing with the old Houston Oilers with the Oilers uh, logo, as well as you know the Houston Cougars put on those Oilers baby blue which are and beautiful they by the way came at them they yeah no. yeah so they came at them and, and, and rice the right is, and rice they yeah. were like you can't do yeah. that nobody owns a color baby blue right oh, but what I, and then think about this the the Roughnecks got in the same situation where. The Titans went after them because the, the oil derrick was too similar. You know what all that translates to is the culture ingrained in Houston to have an Oilers type football team there. Yeah. Okay. It, it, the gamblers are cool. I'm not I'm, I'm not hating on the gamblers. I, I I like gambling, but what I'm saying is the fans in Houston, it's a oil town. All the oil basically in this whole country comes through that port. Texas is a huge provider of oil. There's roughnecks, literal roughnecks everywhere oh, down here. And there's just no branding that could be better for that city. And so it's going to be hard to let it go, right? You're not wrong. So. I will just say, so it wasn't just the Oilers. Also, did you know the Patriots came at them for the 2020 uh, branding because they said that the secondary logo, which was the roughnecks head, looked too similar to the Patriot head logo. So they got attacked by two different franchises. The NFL came with a cease and desist altogether. Interesting. So they redid it. Now the oil rig is much more aged. It's not as pointed. Uh, and then their the secondary logo is not at all the roughneck head like it was. Um, I don't know. I'd love to see the baby blue. I think that would be really cool to bring it back. I don't know why they come at it so hard. I digress. 
it's just really frustrating for me as a content creator because everything I have has the gambler's logo on it. Everything. Also, if I'm going to use players in a graphic, all the players that are in Houston Oil or Houston Roughnecks uniforms are not on that team anymore. They are now, it's the gambler's players in a Roughnecks uniform. So that would be brutal trying to do graphics. Um, I don't know. It's, it's a difficult thing. Scout, what's up? Secondary thing here. Um, so Houston with like the, the Roughnecks thing is like, I'm a huge gambler's uniform guy, right? I like, love the logo. Kenji, Kenji Bahar in the black shirt, black top, black, white pants, silver pants, silver pants. Mm. It goes hard with the number mm, 11. It goes hard. It goes super hard. The, the 11 I the don't like. Blazer, I don't like the Roughnecks uniform. Now, the Roughnecks 2020 uniforms are arguably my favorite spring football uniform that I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. I do not like these new ones. I don't like the Texas flag on the helmet. Cool in concept. I don't like it in practice. I think it looks bad. Uh, the uniform where they have the white on the blue, I don't like that. It doesn't look good to me. The away uniform looks better, but I don't like the uniform at all. So if they are to do this, make it even harder for my graphics, redo the uniform. I want the uniform to be a little bit different. Maybe I more wish I had a uniform to talk to about. <laughs> you do. Go for the <laughs> Renegades, my Look, man. Just, just do a, a, a guy in an oil derrick actually gambling. Boom. Literally gambling on an oil rig. Yeah. <laughs> um, time out, time out, time out. What's up? Under Armour and Starter. Who does the uniforms for next got to be Under Armour. Every player is complaining about starter. Starter then, never actually did anything with the USFL. Yeah, but then do we do we have starter like new jackets and stuff like off field merch or or coaching merch? It's uh, know, what is it? Antigua? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Well, that that's for the USFL. I like their uh, stuff. But I'm saying like we we will start to see like some weird merging in, and then if Under Armour starts making the usfl jerseys i know we just jumped off houston but that would be so cool but does like would the stallions have that same stupid like would we all have the thick stripe down the side i hate it i hate it yeah i don't like it either. the four inch stripe that's on my right thigh i want what better hats that, i just what? bought this 50 percent off on the usfl website mm. i got the new new era gamblers hat it's not good it's not a good hat they should the have... trucker hat for the XFL, bro. I know that the Marcast, who we despise, and the ref were complaining about trucker hats. That shows that the ref is not a real Texan because I wear a trucker hat damn near every day to my job. <laughs> so I love trucker hats and I love those hats. They ran out of Brahma's hats because I was going to buy one because my brother and I decided we liked the Brahma's. Then I kind of rooted, I ended up going to the Renegades because my man Donald Payne Jr. is over there and I love him. So, but I love those hats and I am yet to find a USFL hat that I will actually wear every day out in the field. So, we'll see. Um, 5950, the the fitted cap. Those work. are better. This one, They're doing wonders. Um, which I have some new era hats. I don't know why the USFL ones are just not made very well. They're just the flex fit. None of them are good. Like, no, the, the funny, there. you know, also, ones, this is huge. Why is this so big back here? That's crazy. So I don't know. So you, I don't love this hat. The big bucks, block whatever. B. The Web block still. That... Web's just thinking he wishes he had a hat. Sorry. Well, I'll, I'll tell you a story. He's got a hat. His, so my wife started to pay attention. I guess this week of me doing content, and she found out the Maulers are disappearing. And apparently, on Christmas, I will be getting a bunch of Mauler stuff for my kids. <laughs> and she's like, and his Do wife was like, it? should you still? You still it? want it? And I was like, yeah, I want it. forever. I'm always forever. It doesn't make a difference. I like my favorite team right now is the Brahma bullpen, the Brahmas, yeah. because they have the most Maulers on it. Right? I'll figure yeah. it out on January fifteenth where I'm really going. I guess fanhood wise, but um, I mean, they could still come back. Come like, on, so man. I'll probably get the, uh, the uh, merchandise yeah. that you guys are talking about. And that's, that's the it. hard part. That's the hard part, right? Scout brings up a good, a good thing. A good point. So they are saying we're hoping to bring teams back. They're not gone. They're just on hold. But if they do come back, they're not going to be the same players. They're not going to be yeah. the same coaches. 
Now, the only reason that I would stay with the gamblers if they do become the Roughnecks is because I know all those coaches. I've spent time with those coaches. I've interviewed like 70% of that uh, roster. I care about those players and those coaches. So that's the only reason I would stay. I hate the uniform. I don't like the brand. I don't even really like the city of Houston. Uh, I love Waco. I love Dallas, Austin, and then San Antonio. I don't like Houston. It's really hot. It's a sweaty armpit of Texas. Mm -hmm. But but I'm just very, very loyal to those players and coaches. So it's very hard. Webb has this attachment to the Maulers. He would have to completely redo all of that if they came back because they would have an entirely new staff. It would be all new faces. Which is I'll give you some. I'll give you some cow pasture math. All right. There's no expansion until franchise purchases happen. Till team no franchise and own, and that could be that could be down the road quite a ways. I mean, if you if you were a, a businessman with you know fifty million dollars, whatever. I don't know what the price is going to be twenty million dollars to invest in something, whatever it's going to wind up being. You're not going to invest in that until it's already turning a profit, and That'd you can you can project it. So I mean, you're looking and and not to be Debbie Downer, right? But I mean, you're looking four or five years down the road, if you're lucky, before it even begins. I don't even know when they... Now, I, there was rumor that The Rock, in his meetings, were, were was already talking about uh, franchise sell-offs, like as soon as possible kind of deal. But, you know, you got to make money before you can sell something for money. The I the agree. one thing I will say, the four franchises that are coming over from the USFL side, they all have connections. Fred Smith from FedEx, he brought Memphis a, a team. Uh, the guy that runs Yellowwood, in Birmingham, I, I think he's been rumored in Birmingham. Well, he's making a face there, but the, there there are connections. I forget the guy. Who's the guy in Detroit? I know Scout. Come on, come come through for me. There's a guy in Detroit oh, that uh, really uh, brought them up to Michigan. Uh, well, I mean, Houston Ford I'm, Motor Company. What's that? Like Ford? Like it's not Ford. The, well, it's not, it's not Ford. Itself, but it, I'm pretty sure it's connected. You have to yeah, and the then Houston is Houston. I, it. Both leagues would have had to figure out that problem anyway, and I think if you start to turn a profit, Houston would sell it off, no problem. But that's the one thing about the USFL side that's coming to this. There's already connections to some money there. Like the Liberty Bowl is getting uh, renovated by Fred Smith. Uh, get, guess where uh, the showboats play in the Liberty Bowl? So and Ford connection uh, in Detroit. So I, I, I think you have potential owners. From the USFL side, I don't know too much about San Antonio or Arlington. I'm, I'm guessing you can find owners in Texas um, that would would invest. You ever heard of uh, Red McCombs? Yeah, Red right. McCombs. Oh, yeah, uh, uh, you're yeah. an Aggie, right? Yes, sir. Like you guys just paid Jimbo Fisher to uh, yeah, yeah, disappear you ever heard of, and then go hire a brand Tom, new coach yeah. with no problem. You ever heard of Tom Benson? They were both yeah. former NFL team owners, right? You're talking NFL yeah. team owners, and they're they're here. All their money was made here in San Antonio. Tom so Benson. Jimmy's Tom Benson Hall of Fame, uh, Hall of Fame Stadium. But I agree with both. What? Of you. I agree with both of you. So I agree that there will be no expansion until there's owners. I don't know if it's that far off as you think it may be because of what's what what Webb is saying. Now, um, I believe that they have potential owners for each team. I believe they have a short list of names for each team that they believe could be an owner. But I do believe that what you're saying, Josh, is also true, that none of those owners will pull a trigger. None of those owners will take ownership of a team until they're turning a profit. You have to be able to see that you're going to get your investment back in at least three years of buying a team, right? So we have to see the league really jump up in revenue. Uh, which hopefully we can with Emerge League. So that's something to watch. I don't know if it's as far off, but I do believe they have a short list of names for each team that exists mm -hmm. that they think could do it. So that's exciting. Um, two things, one random, one not random. Oh, let's jump back. The Birmingham Barons B hat that's black and with the red bill, that, that was like the official hat of the Stallions. It happened like in the playoffs of the first season. And then you saw Scooby and Jamar wear it. Um, and then they came back this season. Jamar? Who's Jamar? Demarius, as Mark Thompson don't, calls him? Don't, you mean Marius? Caillou? Caillou? Oh, <laughs> Little Bill? I, I can't <laughs> you do this. Mean, I, I can't. Heard, his, heard his non-throwing hand and set out for the season? God. 
okay but um but yeah but uh, the glue factory that, that was my one thing literally interviewed him i liked him as a human <laughs> yeah and then <laughs> but yeah, he's it's just cool. like whatever like in in the hat conversation it can happen and also there's a company called pure game that does like baseball hat style stuff but it's more like actual performance hat but same thing and it's cheaper anyways also gamblers um it would be very funny if jimmy sexton bought the gamblers i would put it out he, there so. he probably has the money right yeah he, he has to have the money if not he's from too. this buyout from the uh, uh mattress mac mattress <laughs> i wanted that's all, always was the first thing i thought of mattress mac take that money he won from the hey. astros mattress he, mac is a legend in kyle field when they they put him up on the jumbo, jumbotron at every Aggie game, and he says "Giggle Maggies," and the stadium goes nuts, absolutely <laughs> nuts. It's crazy. Every time I drive past that barn, I go gag him. Every time. <laughs> he still has a record, right? He still has a he has a the record for the uh, highest winning uh, bet of all time. Bet, right? Yeah, I believe so. That he yeah. placed it on the Astros to win the World Series and then cashed out and wheelbarrowed it to his car, which is crazy. All right. Well, this episode has gone on for an hour, so I believe we have reached the end. Does anybody have any closing statements? If you do, speak now or forever hold your peace. Butts and seats. Butts and seats. At this oh, point, I agree. I'm on. excited to see butts and seats. What, Scout? I, I, what I got. Uh, I've got kind right. of a blind Wall side. Scout, Wall Scout looks it up. Webb, what do yeah. you got? I got a blind side. You ready? Yes. <laughs> All right, blind side. I got to play that video. I love that video. I, I'll, I'll... I've seen this before. I've seen this. Before. Our transitions are fun. <laughs> Who is the first pick in the first, like, 20 dispersal draft? Just your first pick. Josh, you would give us the XFL. The other two, give me the XFL, uh, USFL. Go ahead, Josh. You go first. You're our guest. So we're talking, we're talking so non-protected, right? Non-protected. Non-protected. Yeah, non-protected. Four contracted teams. In the... In the mini dispersal draft, who will be the first overall pick in your mind? I know it could gonna, depend on the team, but I'm gonna, I, I, I'm gonna butcher the first name. I'm sorry, Jakir Pearson. Mm. Whoever doesn't take him immediately uh, and put him in the slot somewhere is absolutely crazy. Former Seattle, C- former Seattle Street 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 Dragon. Dragon. I agree. Yeah. He posted a highlight video, not a highlight video, a training video of him running routes yesterday, and I literally yeah. quoted it, and I said I blew out both of my knees just watching. He's game shape right now. Game shape right now. It was right now. inhuman what he was doing. So I agree with that. Now, I will give it to you, Scout. Who do you think is going to be the first overall pick? Hmm. He wants a big mind, I can tell. Look at him. He's, he just wants to say I was right. Uh wait oh wait am I picking XFL yeah no US, oh, no no US, US, USFL USFL okay. yeah um there there's one on on my on the tip of my tongue right now I'm not sure I'm trying to remember the other teams okay who who's gone so generals Maulers generals Maulers, stars and breakers stars breakers breakers Okay, I have like I'll, I'll just pick my my favorite like my what my top one for every team would be. So like from the breakers would be Surratt, and then from the generals would be Victor, and then from the uh uh Maulers would be Henny if he's not signed somewhere or has he signed somewhere else? Nope, he's gonna be no, the no, he's, he, yeah, he'd and be then, which inside a trading thing you should help to your other teammates, anyways. But um, and then he couldn't. Was, he was under two year contract. Oh, facts. And then who was the fourth? Who am I forgetting? General oh, the stars. Um, stars. Okay. The general. Oh, there's a few. Stars. If I'm drafting, I'm picking Matt Colburn. That's that's crazy off the wall. But you're taking Case Cookus. Anybody who takes Case Cookus <laughs> is a <laughs> a playoff contention team. Especially if it goes after uh, off of the record of record. last year, right? It's either it's either going to be Memphis or Michigan, Michigan that's going to go first. Well, Memphis has Cole Kelly, who kind of struggled. Michigan, they DJ don't Perry, even have a quarterback on the roster. He just signed back to the NFL, so he's not even on the team. Yeah. yeah. So, dude, Pace Cookus is 100% the guy. Now, if you're looking at um, 
the generals. I don't think it's Vito. I love him, but I think it would be DJ Daniel or maybe Shalom mm-hmm. Luani. Or uh, if you need a DT, Toby Johnson, if you're trying to win. Toby Johnson. Chris Orr is probably the biggest difference maker. Yeah. Though, as far as Chris Orr will go and he will reshape your entire defense. Now, for the Maulers, I believe it's Kiava T- Tazino. Ruben Foster. Tazino's not even on the roster. I don't think yeah, Ruben will like free agent. I don't think Ruben will play. Ruben played because he was able to play for Jaron Horton. I think Ruben's gone. He was only going to play for Jaron. I don't think he even plays in this new league. So I say Kiava Tazino. And then Breakers. Tez, hold on. Tez cannot be drafted. He's a free agent, technically. Because he went to the NFL. Okay, then I'll agree with Henny. I'll agree with Henny. Um, I do like Madre London, though, even though he screwed me in fantasy two years. I like Madre. Then Breakers, probably Vontae Diggs. I, don't know. I think defense is so much harder in this league, honestly. And then who's the last? Nope, he's too old. Yeah, too old. Um, too bad. And running backs, dude, GMs will tell you, running backs are a dime a dozen. Receivers Vito, are a dime. Victor, hello. I don't think so. I, I, I think running backs aren't going to go first. I just don't think that's true. And then the last team is... You went through oh, all of them. Who? Philly. I, feel like yeah. I, said Philly. I said Case yeah. Cookies. I said the Maulers. I said the Breakers. Yeah, you went through. That's it. Oh, and I said the Generals. Okay, I'm done. Yeah, but Case Cook is 100% is going to be the first pick. He literally makes your team a playoff team just by signing. Hmm. I don't care who your quarterback is. I will say you it's will, you don't have a salary cap. Why wouldn't you take the second best quarterback? Quarterbacks get hurt nonstop. Look at the NFL. We have half backup quarterbacks playing right now. If you have Case Cookus to come in and start, if Jamar Smith goes down, that's crazy. So I don't, give I don't Case Cookus to the Brahmas and they're winning the whole thing. I'm just letting you know. I thought the Brahmas, the Brahmas. We, and, we need a quarterback. They remind me. Uh, just doing the research, they remind me of the Maulers of 2022. They were, they won a few games more than the Maulers, but they're just a quarterback away. Three games. Yeah, yeah. Shout we we built badly. Hines Hines built the team to run the ball, and we never could get there. He wanted to run to throw it. You know, we had Joaquin Patrick and Kevin Milage. They were legit running backs. They were great. They couldn't get it going. I think Patrick just signed a NFL contract too. Uh, just a couple weeks ago. So, but yeah, we need a quarterback. Jack Cone, yeah, yeah, Jack Cone. Oh, Jack was good. He just, oh, painful. He, 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 uh, he held on the ball a little long, you know, it, and I don't know if he was waiting That's for guys to come thought. open. I don't know if he was waiting for guys to come open or he didn't just didn't have enough time. But, you know, I talked to my boy Chidi the other day. Uh, and uh, that is how you say his name. He said to pronounce it like Chidi Chidi Bang Bang, as he told me how to practice it. So, uh, Chidi told me that, uh, he he gave him the time, you know. So yeah, and he might have been holding on a little too bit. much time. It was crazy. Kurt Benkert yeah. came in and got one win. That was oh, crazy. I had such hope for him. He, he, he got crazy. hurt. God, he got hurt horrible. immediately, but he did win the game. And then you had one more quarterback, and I can't remember who it was. Senate Reed Senate. Yeah, he was not good either. It was all pretty bad. It was annoying because the rest of the team, like their defense, kept them in it every game. And I wish the leagues would just merge the two franchises, one from each side. Brahmas and the Maulers would be a perfect Let's match. Get it. It'd Let's be get a perfect it. match. Crazy. Merge the two Houston teams, put Birmingham with Orlando. Oh my God. Yeah. That's what I said that. I said that before. That'd be perfect. Like, Michigan can have DC. You give us Latimer. Oh my God. Um. <laughs> All right. Well, it has been an hour and 10 oh. minutes. I believe. Oh my gosh, Scout. Say it quick. What? <laughs> November 23rd. Get down here. Anyways, Texas right. A&M's coming to Auburn. There you go. Texas A&M, Auburn. War Eagle. But. <laughs> you ain't ready. No. Yeah, hey, I think I'm not War Eagle. That, but... You ain't ready. Nah, in Texas, I only root for one team. I was at the Texas A&M Auburn game this year, in case you're wondering. I remember what happened. <laughs> All right. Well. <laughs> Thank you, guys. SEC Thank team. you, Josh. Oh, my God. <laughs> Thank you, Josh, so much for coming on. We Thank loved you. having you. You were great. Horns forward, bro. As far as the expo goes, I'm horns forward. Thanks, guys. Uh, hey, you are fantastic. I love having you on our network, you and Dustin. I love your show. This is fantastic. Love it. Well, while I'm here, I really appreciate you guys giving us the opportunity. 
I want to see some more XFL content on here. I don't want to be the I don't want to fight to off find- all you USFL guys by myself. I need some I need some back. We are actively trying. <laughs> We're together now. We're united, right? United Football Media, United, United Football League. League, the United Bowl. rivalry is often, okay. often worse than complete enemies attacking each other. So just let you know. I do beat my brother up a lot. But, uh, <laughs> Scout, thank you for coming on again. Uh, I believe the episode you were on was our second highest rated show we'd ever had. <laughs> at that point was the first show you were on. So we had to get you back on. You need to do some voiceover work or something. You need to do the radio for Stallions games there in Birmingham. Uh, but guys, thank you so much for coming on web. I'll probably see you in two weeks. We, we always do this show. It's our thing, man. 30 well, December 27th, man. It's going to be crazy. Follow us on Twitter. All of us right there because uh, December 27th is going to be wild. Josh is going to have the whole things. XFL basically by himself. That's I don't even know what's happening on the 27th. So, that's the draft. The dispersal draft. <laughs> no, that's the 42 cut down, right? Oh, oh my well. gosh. No, I thought it said that We're they have less, to though, right? cut down yeah. by December 27th. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. We oh, can, for oh, the draft on 27th. So we, it says players on uh, prior to the 27th. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Because the 27th is the dispersal draft. There you go. All so right. They all get but, cut on Christmas. Gotcha. Yes, Got it. That sucks. sucks. But thank you guys for coming on. Thank you, everybody, for watching. This has been episode 34 of USFLA. 34. Next episode, we'll hand out the Turpin jersey since USFL is gone. Yes. Oh, my gosh. We will hand out the Cavante Turpin jersey. We have we are well over 1,000 subscribers now, so we will get that out to you guys. But until next time, once forward, guys. Everybody put it up. Let's go.